In the beginning, males and females evolved so that they could come together, mate and produce offspring. And so we believe that sex has one simple purpose, reproduction. But look closer. These are two females having sex, and these two have formed a homosexual pair bond. These octopuses are both male, and these male dolphins will probably be lifelong sexual partners. This kind of sexual behavior is not going to produce young. Yet, from seals to flies, to date, homosexual behavior has been documented in a few hundred species. Young American bison also stick to homosexual behavior, sometimes for up to five years. Typically, after a period of play fighting, they mount each other. Because older bulls prevent young bulls from mating with females, this behavior was interpreted as misdirected sexual frustration. But in several studies, the older bulls were removed, and although there were plenty of available females, same-sex mounts continued. Many of these early interpretations had one thing in common. Whether for practice or to excite the opposite sex, animals engaging in homosexual behavior had only one purpose, to improve their chances for future reproductive sex. Then, one group of apes emerged from their forest home in Central Africa and forced scientists to reconsider the purpose of any kind of sex. These two, gazing into each other's eyes, are male and female. But as primatologist Franz de Waal realized, bonobos will have sex with male or female partners, with young and old, while feeding or playing or carrying young. And they have sex often, all day long in fact. Yeah, the sexual behavior of the bonobo, I think, is the most flexible sexual behavior that we know outside of the human species. I usually call bonobos pansexual in the sense that I would never call them homosexual because they have not an exclusive orientation at all to one sex or the other. Uh, so, so they use sex in all combinations of individuals, basically free for all. Female bonobos only have young every six years or so, yet they have sex whether or not they are in estrus, and even while they are pregnant or feeding young. Even the very young have sex, face to face. If any creatures are to break the long-held theory that all animal sex is somehow linked to reproduction, it is these bonobos. A favorite theory attempts to give all this sex a social purpose, linking it to dominance behavior a high-ranking male putting a youngster in his place. But it's not the whole story for bonobos. Youngsters and low-ranking animals often mount their elders and betters and as such, the sex often appears reciprocal. So why do bonobos spend so much time and energy having sex with so many different kinds of partner? As far as choosing partners for sex, uh, I think it is partly dictated by social bonds, by political strategies, uh, and partly by tensions, because uh, when tensions increase between bonobos, it is translated into sexual behavior. Food induces competition, and instead of fighting with each other, that's why we call them make love, not war apes. Instead of fighting with each other, they have sex and then they share the food afterwards. These make-love-not-war apes often have sex face-to-face, -face, a position once thought to be the sole preserve of humans. Duval is as aware as any scientist of the dangers of making links between these highly sexual apes and humans. 
But there is one point he feels bonobos make very strongly. Well, I think what the bonobo tells us is that um, the sexual life of close relatives of ours is extremely flexible and very rich. And so people who claim that the only function of sex can be reproduction are wrong on the bonobo and are probably very wrong on us because sex can have multiple functions and can be very variable within a larger society. And homosexual behavior? It's marginalized only in certain cultures. It's almost as if yeah, it was pushed in a corner and as, as a result, people who have homosexual interests became exclusive homosexuals, whereas actually they might be uh, bisexual. And the same is maybe true for many heterosexuals. So there's a sort of divide between the two that is maybe not naturally there, but, but culturally created by intolerance. Certainly in bonobos and in other primate societies that have been studied, animals engaging in homosexual behavior do not seem to be marginalized. On the contrary, their behavior is just another part of everyday life. It has long been accepted that dolphins are playful, physical, affectionate creatures. They're also very sexual. These two male bottlenose may well have been together since they were young. When one partner rests, the other watches out for predators. They nurse each other when wounded and travel together in search of females. They will even share the same female. But the male-female bond is temporary. It is the male-male bond which lasts. Two male couples often meet up to form a foursome. If a dolphin dies, his widowed partner may search in vain for another single male. Sometimes the widower is welcomed by the male couple which were his part-time companions, and they form a threesome. But a widower has never been known to break an already existing male pair bond. In the Bahamas, bottlenose share the warm waters with spotted dolphins. Equally sensual and sexual, the spotted dolphins have a similar social setup. Denise Herzing has been tracking these two communities for 16 years and has been able to study male-male and female-female couples. In dolphins, both males and females have what is known as a genital slit, and same-sex partners stimulate this slit with their beak or rostrum. There's a behavior called beak genital propulsion, where they seem to push each other. It's probably just a form of stimulation along in the water with one dolphin's uh, rostrum in the other dolphin's genital, male-male and female-female. So why are same-sex pair bonds so strong? If same-sex behavior has the function of, uh, of pleasure or social bonding, then what you've got is a mechanism, in addition to other mechanisms, that glue a society together. Society, in this case, would seem to include more than just one species, as a bottlenose male appears to consent to homosexual behavior with a group of spotted dolphins. Sometimes the interactions between these two species are aggressive. Other times they cooperate, babysitting or joining forces against sharks. But why should there be homosexual behavior between two different species? Perhaps the same bonding which works within a group works across species which cooperate with each other. But as with so many questions in this area, research is in its infancy and scientists are still searching for the answers.